Draymond Green of the Golden State Warriors went down recently against the LA Lakers with an ankle injury and upon looking at the replay it looks like his foot goes into that classic inversion position that most people would associate with rolling their ankle. Now on the actual play that Green was injured on he would jump up to try to contest a shot and he would land fine but he would backpedal a bit and when he did this, he accidentally stepped on another player's shoe, and that's when we saw what looks like that foot roll inwards. Now, right after the injury happened, we saw that Green was in noticeable pain and he was limping on the court, and he ultimately did not return to the game, and this can be a very scary position for the ankle like that because there can be a number of different types of injuries associated with that position. However, we did hear that Steve Kerr recently spoke to Draymond Green and that Green told him that he didn't feel like the ankle injury was too bad. Now, we don't know officially what's going on with Draymond Green's ankle injury at this time, but several news sources as of right now have classified it as an ankle sprain. And there's actually a grading system for ankle sprains. And so since some people may not be too familiar with that, I'm gonna go ahead and focus on that in today's video. Welcome basketball fans. For those of you that aren't familiar with me, my name is Nick Gallo and I'm a doctor of physical therapy. And with today's video, we're gonna take a very close look at Draymond Green's most recent ankle injury against the LA Lakers. First, I'm going to start off the video by showing the actual play that Green was injured on so that we get a good visualization for his mechanism of injury. Then I'll go over the anatomy associated with that inversion ankle sprain position. And finally, I'll go over the grading system of ankle sprains and a typical timeline to recovery depending on what grade it's classified as. If you like today's video and you find it informative, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because I will be making more videos in the future regarding sports injuries, rehabilitation, and other physical therapy related content. Also, if you have any comments or questions, please leave those in the comment section below. Now to begin, let's take a look at the play that Green was injured on. Here Green jumps up to try to contest the shot and he actually lands fine, but as he steps back right here with that left foot, we see he steps on the player's shoe and he rolls it inwards. Right after the play, we see that he is limping and he's in noticeable pain. So here I have a model of the foot and ankle and the position that Green's foot went into is something known as inversion. And inversion is classified by the foot going inwards just like this and this is actually the position that most people would commonly associate with an ankle sprain. Now there is a normal value for the amount of inversion that a person should have and typically that is around 35 degrees. So a person should naturally have about 35 degrees at that ankle joint in that inversion movement. Now when a person lands in that inversion position, or in this case, as we saw that Draymond Green stepped backwards, he stepped on another player's foot, and that made his foot briefly go into that inversion position. He briefly, it looks like, went beyond that 35 degrees. And when you do this, this is going to stress all of the structures that are located on the lateral or the outside portion of the ankle. Now there are three ligaments on that lateral or outside portion of the ankle that are associated with ankle sprains. The first one, and actually the most common to injure, in this inversion ankle sprain position is something known as the anterior talofibular ligament, or ATFL for short. And so this ligament is going to go from the talus right here to the fibula bone, just like that. There's another ligament that's also at risk in this position, and it's known as the calcaneofibular ligament. That ligament goes from the calcaneus bone right here and will also attach to the fibula. And finally, there's one other ligament, and that's known as the posterior talofibular ligament, or PTFL. And that is actually located right here you have it going from the talus to the fibula as well. Now, as of right now, we don't know which ligament is affected if this is in fact an ankle sprain. Some news sources are reporting it as an ankle sprain, but some results could come out later after he undergoes official imaging and they could release some other type of statement regarding the injury. So as of right now, we don't know officially which ligament is involved if it is an ankle sprain, but it's really important to know that the anterior talofibular ligament or the ATFL is the most common one associated with that inversion ankle sprain. Now there's also other structures that can be stressed in that inversion ankle position, such as tendons for the peroneal muscles. And the peroneal muscles predominantly play a major function in eversion. So they do the opposite of inversion. So if a person goes beyond their norm in inversion, 
then those peroneal tendons are also at risk. So that's something else that could also be indicated in this injury. It hasn't been released as of yet, but usually when someone does have an inversion ankle sprain, those typically are also affected. And of course, when someone goes into this inversion ankle sprain position, something else they're at risk for is a malleolar fracture. So the end of the fibula here creates a section of the bone known as the malleolus. And the one that is on the fibula is known as the lateral malleolus. And if you actually feel on the outside of your ankle, that's that knotty bone right there. And you also have a medial malleolus, which is the end of the tibia. And if you feel around the inside of your ankle, that's where that knotty bone is there. So he's also at risk for fractures, but given the fact that he's already spoken with Steve Kerr and he's not too concerned about it, makes me believe that he's probably not dealing with a fracture at this time, but I do expect Draymond Green to have imaging to rule out all of these other serious injuries. Now, there is a grading system for these ankle sprains. Grades one, two, and three. And in a grade one ankle sprain, a person is going to have some stretching of the ligament, but there's not gonna be any tearing. In a grade two ankle sprain, you're going to see some stretching and you're also going to see some partial tearing of the ligament. And finally, grade three ligament sprains, that's going to be a full tear of that ligament. And typically in a grade three ankle sprain, you're going to see a lot of extra instability in the ankle. And usually this would be a clinical indicator for some type of surgery. If a person is dealing with a grade one ankle sprain, the typical time frame for this is anywhere between a few days to about two weeks. If someone's dealing with a grade two ankle sprain, typically this can range anywhere between three to six weeks. And finally, a grade three ankle sprain is when you do have that full tearing of a ligament. A lot of times surgery is indicated, so this can really prolong the recovery process in upwards between two to three months. Now, once again, we don't know exactly what the injury is, and if it is an ankle sprain, they have not clarified about what grade specifically it is. But given the fact that he's already spoken with Coach Kerr, it sounds like he's definitely not dealing with anything serious based on his own interpretation. So I think right now I would rule out a grade three and I would point maybe towards a grade one, maybe a grade two at most. But of course it's going to be important that Green has that official evaluation. I'm sure he's been evaluated since the injury. Up until now, we're just awaiting the results of that. So as soon as I hear any results or anything, I'll be sure to update everybody in the comment section. And if you happen to hear any Anything, please feel free to also post it. And that's it as of right now regarding Draymond Green's most recent ankle injury. Once again, if you really like today's video, please subscribe to the channel because I will be making more videos in the future. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.